Namaste, hello and welcome to my channel. So this video is episode 2 of various different tips that I do on Odyssey, especially for the ones who are newly getting inducted into the world of Odyssey and also maybe the ones who have been learning for a while and are planning to start performing. So last episode I covered 5 tips, 3 of them were dance related and then 2 of them were the costume related tips. This week I do something similar. I do 3 that will be relating to the techniques of the dance and then 2 that will be more about the appearance of the dance style. Okay? So first tip that I would like to tell you about is oftentimes we do struggle not just with holding our chakra. By the way, how to excel at that, I have already talked about it in my previous tips video. So if you haven't watched it, feel free to go check that out. So as much as it is important to be able to sit in chakra, to be able to maintain the right gap while you're in the chakra position, those are all leg related stuff. How do you make sure that your hands are also in the exactly right position without your elbows dropping, without you changing the angles here and there, okay, or your shoulders feeling tired? One of the easiest way of doing that is, now this is an exercise which not just helps your hand but also helps your leg. So I'll show you both, but here the focus would be that we do not let our hands drop. So that way we are helping build our build the strength and stamina in our biceps and triceps in the forearm and then also the muscles along the uh, upper arm and then also the muscles along the forearm. And that way you can make sure that you can sit in chalk and stay in this position or any other position. Hold your hand posture for really long without feeling tired. Okay? Alright. So the first that we do is we do Kumrupad. So those who don't know what Kumrupad is, this is Kumrupad. Go on your toes and then your heels are almost touching. It might not always touch. That's fine. Depends on what posture or what height you are at. Uh, but that is essentially Kumrupad. So what we'll do is we'll stretch our arms out completely, okay? Completely take them out. You can clasp them. This helps me. It helps me stay centered. Uh, but if you want to if you want to hold it, if you want to just stretch them out, hold them separately, that's fine too. If you want to hold them with just about touching the tips, that's fine too. So I'll clasp mine. Hold them out straight at the shoulder level, not lower, not higher up, exactly at the shoulder level. And now on a count of eight, we'll go down and then we'll hold on a, for a count of eight and we'll come back up on a count of eight. Watch by the way how I'm going down because this is additionally, besides helping you with the hand, it's also going to help you with the legs and the control of the legs. Five, six, seven, go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to drop my hand. This is one rep. So I'm doing eight counts of going down, eight counts of staying down, eight counts of coming up, and then eight counts of staying again before I start repeating this one set. Okay? Technically, this is a total exercise of 32 seconds. Yeah? If you repeat it, say the very first time that you're doing, by the end of the first rep, your arms might start hurting. If you're not used to doing a lot of hand related exercises. If you are, it might not. If it is hurting, push yourself to do three, at least three. If one hurts, push yourself to do three. If one doesn't hurt, challenge yourself that can I keep going to four or five? Okay? If four or five also doesn't hurt, take up the challenge of doing 10. So that way, you can basically make sure that you're able to uh, strengthen your arms and give your legs the stamina. First of all, to continuously go down, sit, come up, continuously go down, sit, come up at a controlled posture. So at every second, I'm holding myself at a certain height. I'm not going to go down quickly. I'm not going to come up quickly. That's easy. We'll do what is difficult so that Whenever we are dancing, if it's easy, we already got it. If it's hard, we got it too. Okay? So keep that in mind. That is a great exercise, by the way, uh, for your thigh muscles, for your like, inner thigh, outer thigh. It also helps you slowly, the more and more you get comfortable with opening your legs and sitting. See, it's almost like one interior on either side. So it's almost like a split that you got. So the more and more you practice this, the more and more you allow your body to slowly go down, stay there, slowly come back up. It helps you with your thigh muscles, not just the strength of it, but also the agility of it, okay? 
Another added benefit is what I did with my toes. Whenever you're going down and sitting on Kumbhakar, remember the entire weight is on the ball of your toes. Okay? On your toes, the ball of your toes goes together. Now, that's a very small part of your body, a really tiny surface area. But how do we make sure that we make it very, very strong? Because in order to see, we use a lot of our toes as well as our heel. So there is a very simple exercise, very, very simple. But you need to do it quite frequently so that you see the improvement come along your way. Okay? So first and foremost would be keep your feet together. Okay? I'll also turn sideways so that you can see it better. But first let me show it the front view. Okay? I'll go on my toes, hold it, come back up, go on my heel, come back up, go on my toes, come back heel, come back toes, come back heel, come back toes, come back heel, come back toes, come back heel. On the side, if you are interested to see, I'm going to go on my toes, and then my heel, on my toes, then my heel, on my toes, then my heel, on my toes, then my heel. Make sure that you, especially when you're going on your heel, right? Don't try to push it out from your hip. What most people do is they have a tendency of one, two, three, four. That's not the right way to do it. You have to try to keep your back straight, and then with the minimal amount of force that you can generate from your this bone and the knees, you have to go on your hips. So one, two, three, four. A lot of it is actually coming from my knee. I'm strengthening my knee as well. Okay. So one, two. Three, four. Of course, your ankle bone as well because that's the one that's essentially doing the motion. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is right. What is not? What? What not to do? One, two, three, four. Ah, uh ah, -uh, that's wrong. Okay. So don't push yourself. Don't make it easy by just pushing your hips out. Okay. So that is step two. Feet. This will help you strengthen your toes and your heel. Again. I would say do easily 30 to 40 times better, even better if you can do it 50 times every day. First of all, this exercise doesn't hurt. You won't even realize how quickly you start seeing the benefits of it. And uh, of course, it kind of makes you, you know, give this rocking motion, which all of us like, right? It's kind of relaxing and calming in its own way. Okay. All right. Now, moving on to our tip number three, which is going to be with our face. Or rather, one of the most important features on our face, that is our eyes. Okay. So this is something that, you know, would help you to establish what is unique about the eye movement of Odyssey. Mostly, I'm not saying all the time, mostly the eye movement of Odyssey is not very sharp. I'm not going to look at a certain direction like this. Like, I'm not going to give a very sharp, discrete motion. It wouldn't look like this. One, two, it doesn't. If I have to look to the right, I also wouldn't do one or two. Unusual. I might do once in a while, one, two, three, four, but you see my eyes won't constantly keep going from left to right. That is more characteristics of Bharatanatyam, Kuchipuri and certain other styles maybe. But for Odyssey, what we're going to do is we would rather have a rounded motion to both our neck and our eyes. But let's focus on eyes today. Neck, we'll talk about it some other day. Okay. So what am I going to do with my eye? If I have to look to my right, I'm going to look first in the center. And then I'm going to slightly, very slightly, literally from the corner of my eye, take a glance on the left side and then look to the right. And then hold it on the right. And then now if I have to look to the left, I'm again going to almost steal a glance and look to the left. Steal a glance and look to the right. Steal a glance and look to the left. How am I stealing my glance? The quickest, easiest way to learn that is when you're looking to the right and now you want to look to the left, you look down a little on the right side itself, holding your sight, holding your uh, gaze on the right side, you look down momentarily for like a split of a second. So one and two. So you see it goes, it follows an action like, my eyes are doing that. It's going to look down for a second and then look there and then hold. Then again hold. Then again quickly look down and hold. Look, look on the other side and hold. Look down, hold. Look down, hold. Look down, hold. Mostly, it is accompanied with the neck movement. So, I'll just show you how it looks with the neck movement, but the breakdown of the neck, I'll give it to you some other day. So, it's going to go like 1, 2, and 3, and 4, 5, and 6, and 7, and 8. 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, and 6, and 7, and 8. There is always that rounded eye movement, and even with the neck, that you would see, which is very, very characteristic of Odyssey. 
okay this is probably the only dance style that da that does this rounded motion with the eyes and everything okay all right now that we have completed three technical details or three technical tip of odyssey uh, i would quickly like to talk about while we are on the topic of eye i would quickly like to talk about the eye makeup this is nothing i would not say this is anything that is unique only to odyssey this is true for all classical dance styles and it is important that we talk about it you would see that classical dancers they have really big and bold eye makeup and they also have really big and bold eyebrows why is that important usually classical dance is presented in concerts or in uh, you know productions wherein we usually have uh, an auditorium of the minimum capacity of 500 to 1000 or it could even be really more so you can imagine there would be a lot of people sitting far far away from you right now it would be unfair to say that whatever you are doing on stage they can see as you are doing it people those are sitting in the front row they can see it very easily makes sense but people those are sitting away from you what do they really need to see is in, most importantly is what your eyes are doing because eyes are believed to be the most expressive uh, part on your face they literally are responsible for 80% of what your face does while telling a story right so if at all you were to you were able to enhance the eye so that it, it kind of brightens it kind of makes it larger than life that way people those are sitting far far away from you even if they cannot see the smallest intricate details they more or less get what's happening so if at all i'm looking to the right and my eyes are big and wide and painted really well like bold and you know strong and black and dark people those are sitting far away from me even they can see what's happening with my eye but if i was to paint it very faint in a very you know feminine nice subtle elegant manner we will lose that we will not be able to help our audience watch us no matter how far they are from us so i hope that kind of helps you to understand that why it is important that each time that you're going on the stage whenever you're doing your classical dance makeup you do big bold eyes that is very very crucial okay also because we do a lot of things with our eyes so the more we can enhance it the more we can underline it the better it is the more attention we can bring to it and last i'll talk a little about the headgear so odyssey has a very unique headgear right the one that i'm wearing right now so what all goes into it there are three components to it one is a small mala which is pretty much what you would put around your bun which is which gets hidden so even if i turn back you might not be able to see it but you can see that i have a bun and then i have this big mukut and then there is a slight small gap in between that is where that small little mala sits why is that mala needed such that this big mukut it can sit comfortably stay intact no matter what you're doing with your head while you're dancing even if you're taking ten spins or if you're like you know doing very high energy um a difficult hard hitting steps even then it stays in the place without moving and then there is a third component which is what the it pretty much looks like a cone or a small tiny uh, little i probably we can name it we can call it like a little peak okay so that is what we would place right here what do i mean by right here so where my hair ends before the mukut starts so my hair ends to go into a bun this is the bun then the mala comes on top of it and then the mukut comes on top of it but the hair that i have before the mukut that that little peak it comes with a loop which is made up of metal and that goes and tucks itself in there and personally uh, i personally do not use it a lot only because i find that loop kind of you know getting stuck in my hair but it just enhances the beauty so I encourage everybody who should and can wear it and enjoy wearing it But as I said, I have an issue with the uh, loop of it, so I do not wear it. Is it wrong? Technically, it is not. That's because, again, as I mentioned, uh, this part is really the most important. The the defining characteristics of the headgear of Odyssey is really the mukut. So as long as you're wearing that in a traditional Odyssey performance, uh, it is still very, very technically right. And again, as I mentioned, a lot of customization has happened over the years uh, to the dance costume, and it also varies from different schools, like what. Um, Uh, Guru Kirucharan Mahapatra students that uh, currently the institute is called Shujan what they would wear versus what um, a dancer or a dance student from another great great gurukul called Ritigram would wear might vary a lot somebody who is a disciple of uh, um, the Madhavi Mudgalji they would again wear something very very different they customize a lot somebody who is 
Posha de Ghosh's student, they would again wear something different. So it really depends, like you know, these little variations that you bring about, it is very intrinsic to each of these school or each of these institutions that practices and you know, rationalizes what they're doing in the right format, right? So yeah, that is really what about the headgear is. The headgear can be made up of two material, one is thermocol and the other material is cloth. So cloth is safer because thermocol kind of has a tendency to shed off. So if you are planning to buy one, I would definitely suggest cloth. But I personally like thermocol because it's sturdier according to me. The cloth one is a little bit more softer and malleable. Whereas the thermocol one it kind of goes on your bun and sits pretty much in an intact and locked manner. So that's my personal favorite. But in terms of maintenance, in terms of longevity, the cloth one is always better. So yeah, having said that, it brings us to the end of today's episode. I'll be back again with five more tips about Odyssey, technical tips and some stuff about the physical aspect of it and maybe slowly certain other interesting facts as well. Till then, take care, be safe and I'll see you again. Bye-bye.